Hi there. After understanding the bureaucratic and political lenses or the perspectives, we are going to talk about various limitations of CBA and hence the solutions of those limitations. And these are also known as the other analytical approaches to which are al alternative to the CBA. The first problem that we face due to which there are limitations is the technical side. So there are technical limitations and these are when it comes to monetization. We in the interventions we want to achieve the Pareto efficiency and for that uh, we need to monetize the effects because if the impacts are monetized it becomes easy to allocate the resources accordingly. So um, the first thing is that if the impacts are not easily monetized or we cannot monetize them. The other possibility is that one impact, which is a major impact, is not being monetized. So in that uh, couple of possibilities, we undertake qualitative and uh, qualitative CBA and cost effectiveness analysis. These are the two alternatives to standard CBA that we have in these two situations. So let's talk about the first one as a hint was given about the qualitative CBA's suitability. We are going to talk about the monetization of all the uh, possible impacts that we can transform. That is, we try to monetize all the impacts that are easily transformable into monetary terms. And for the remaining, what we do is we resort to the qualitative estimates. These qualitative estimates can be some sort of scales, some sort of grades or scores, just like in an educational institution, the abilities, the capabilities that they have gathered, uh, that is the students, it is measured with the help of scores or grades. We can do their ranking with the scales as well. And once we are able to do this, these remaining uh, cost and benefits are roughly converted into some values that are perhaps not monetized because we have already monetized those impacts that are easily monetizable so the remaining are converted into qualitative estimates what we can do is we can uh, estimate those values or we can also borrow them from other similar older products that have um, similar kind of uh, benefits and costs and scope uh, it can be very helpful if we are running short on time or resources so if the impact is not monetized we try to quantify it at least numerically and after quantifying these uh, impacts, the thing is that how accurate these estimates are. It usually depends on the cost of obtaining these numerical estimates because if they are quite uh, deep in terms of their estimations, definitely we will need more intellectual and time related resources to devote to them, to quantify these impacts. So it can become a little difficult and it can be more demanding and it can be more costly. So the degree of accuracy can be determined with the help of these factors. Then the other possibility is the cost effectiveness analysis in which the major effect or the major benefits are not quantified in monetary terms. They are quantified in some non-monetary units but not monetized. So what we can do is we can rank the policies with the help of this cost effectiveness analysis tool. And the usual net social benefit criteria is not able to rank the policies because it doesn't have the application in this case as the major benefit is not monetized. So what analysts can do is that they can evaluate the policies from two perspectives. One is to maximize the benefits or the effects. You can notice that I'm not calling it benefit, I'm calling it effect because it is not likely to be in monetary terms. It can be some sort of influence on the people, their satisfaction, their awareness level, etc. So it is considered as an effect rather than a benefit. So effect can be more, uh, maximized and cost can be kept constant. And the other possibility is the uh, minimization of the cost while keeping a certain minimum target of the effect in our mind. So in the first option we will uh, be able to maximize the impact while keeping a certain cost in our mind and in the second we will be able to uh, get a certain level of impact by minimizing the cost. So this was about when the benefits have difficulty in terms of their monetization. The other issue can be when there is uh, or there can be more than one 
factors other than the efficiency. Let us consider for the sake of ease that we are talking about the inequality or dissatisfaction in the society. It is something which is not included in the efficiency of the project where we calculate NPV. So for that what we do is we try to include those factors as well so that we could achieve the Pareto efficiency with the help of this goal, with the help of this uh, couple of uh, tools and uh, it is uh, categorized into two uh, variants. One is the multi-goal analysis and the other is distributionally weighted cost-benefit analysis. Uh, let us see one by one both of these. One is a multi-goal analysis and what we do is we have multiple goals in it. We don't have this one goal of efficiency. So the policy alternatives, they are compared with respect to all the values. It means that it is a comprehensive way of evaluating the alternatives we have. Evaluate each alternative with respect to each objective. So all of the objectives they are considered vis-a-vis -vis the alternatives that we have. It can be better understood with the help of a table that we will see in the next slide. And it is already understandable. We can anticipate that none of the policies can be the one which is best in all of the objectives. It can happen once in a blue moon, but usually it doesn't happen. And most commonly, uh, if one uh, objective is achieved in good way, in the most effective way, the other objectives will be in, not in the best way in the same policy alternative. Let us see in this uh, table, it, it can help us to understand the whole thing. You can see that it's a kind of matrix or a table in which alternative family aid policies are to be given. Here we have goals and we have impact categories and policy alternatives. These are the goals that we are trying to achieve. These are the various impact categories that we want to achieve under these goals. There are subcategories and these are the policy alternatives. Policy A is the status quo. It means that we are not undertaking any project. Policy B is an alternative project and policy is another alternative intervention. So if you look at these uh, uh, goals, first one is efficiency and within efficiency the earnings of the labor, they matter. Uh, the human capital investment, it matters, and the administrative costs, they matter. So in this uh, alternative family aid policies intervention, the earnings of the labor, the cost in the form of investment in the human capital, and the administrative costs, they are considered. So you can see the simple CBA analysis is evident in this goal, that is the goal of efficiency. Now the other is quality of life of the poorest family. This is beyond the efficiency thing. It is from the social point of view that we are considering the number of family families below the poverty line. These are the rich, uh, poor people that we want to consider. We also want to consider the one parent families. We also want to consider the educational achievements of the family members. So you see these are familial variables and they are more from the social point of view. And then we have political feasibility. Definitely, if a new policy is to be introduced, its legislation, if it is needed, if there is no precedent, then it, its uh, legislation is required. And what is the probability of the adoption of the required legislation is something we should try to include because it is not sure that the new policy and its legislation will be approved. So in this column and, and the remaining two columns, we can put some cross or a tick observing that various uh, factors of the impacts they are existing or not or if we have values we can put those values by putting these values or highlighting their presence or absence we can clearly see that which one of these is having a desirable situation and which one of them is not so you see even these uh, ticks and crosses they are able to guide us about what is more desirable on the whole, we can see that this policy B is appearing to be uh, most effective because uh, there are maximum number of ticks in it. If we can get some numerical values, it is also it is going to be even more explicit and better to uh, understand. So you see that this is how uh, this uh, multi-goal analysis can be useful when it comes to other goals than the um, efficiency, which is usually addressed in our CBA, but these are usually missing, so we have to include them in order to have a better analysis. In this uh, multi-goal analysis, there is one thing that can be improved and it is 
the relative importance of various criterion that we have because if we are considering the number of uh, poor people we should also consider that we can assign a higher weight or depending upon the uh, direness of the need that they have so that uh, the benefits they are considered more as uh, for the uh, poorest families or where the income inequality is severe so assigning weights can further refine this analysis of multi goal uh, nature. Here there is an attempt to do the same. You can see that in this distributionally weighted CBA, as the name goes, we are going to assign weights to various groups in the society. These are, you know, several uh, relevant groups and they can be with respect to their income or wealth that we can assign them some sort of weights. And with the help of that, we can uh, calculate the weighted average and then the ranking can be done in a more effective way. This will give us a distributionally weighted cost benefit analysis, which is done in a cost wise manner. Um, if we consider this formula, it's a very simple formula and effective as well, that the net benefits of the poor have their own weight and the net benefits of the middle class, they have, they, uh, we have assigned a certain weight to it and a certain weight is uh, uh, assigned to the net benefits of the rich. And in this case, uh, definitely we expect that more weight is given to um, net benefits of the poor as compared to the middle class and definitely as compared to the rich class because we want to benefit them the most as compared to the other classes in the society. But once if we select these weights, there will be a, a response or reaction from the other classes because the rich people, they may not prefer lower weights and the justification of these weights can be uh, a serious task to defend for the cost benefit analysts because usually these weights are inversely related with the level of wealth and the people who are poor will be having higher weights so this is a contentious problem it can create issues however uh, this thing is done that is distribution weighted cost benefit analysis and the other was the multi-goal analysis and in addition to this um, uh, we had another couple of types of CBA which was um, um, effective in, in case of uh, our difficulty in monetizing the impacts. So this is how we are able to uh, monetize and primarily quantify those impacts that are difficult uh, to monetize or impact and if we have other stakes, for example, the uh, desirability of the income equality then we can also have uh, a couple of tools that we can use instead of the standard cba so this is how we can try to overcome the limitations of the standard cba